Her name is Lola. She was a showgirl with yellow feathers in her hair and a dress cut down to there. She was merengue. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Jane Pauley. Pop music superstar Barry Manilow is taking on a brand new role, composer of a Broadway musical. That, after a career which has truly made him a legend, and David Pogue tells us no one is more surprised than Barry Manilow himself. I write the songs that make the whole around during the 70s and 80s, you can probably sing along with many of Barry Manilow's 50 top 40 hits. Could it be magic? Like, could it be magic? How happy you made me, oh man. Mandy. Looks like, Looks like we made it. And of course, Copa, Copacabana. Copacabana. The hottest He's sold 85 million records, He's won a Tony, a Grammy, and an Emmy, and... In honor of 14 years and 637 shows, bringing the Elvis rap. He's now performed more times in Las Vegas than Elvis Presley. It's a miracle, a true blue spectacle, a miracle come true. All of this came as a huge surprise to Barry Manilow. I didn't understand why anybody would like what I was doing on that stage. What's your theory? <laughs> I've never figured it really? out. Really? David, I've never figured it out. But maybe we should start at the beginning. Here, in the Williamsburg neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York, in the fourth floor walk-up where he came of age. Right there was my little bedroom up there. Wow! On the very top floor. Were you poor? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I had nothing. This is it. What you're looking at. Poor, beyond poor. Uh, these are not good memories. I want you to know these are not good memories. Okay. But then his stepfather, Willie, entered the picture. He brought a stack of albums that may as well have been a stack of gold mm. because I'd never heard music like that from Broadway musicals, classical music, great jazz and pop singers. Then Willie got me a little spin at piano and everything changed. As soon as I hit the keys, I knew that this was going to be it for me. Manilow got a job at, of all places, CBS. But at night, he pursued his real passion, musical theater. I'd never met people like that, theater people. They were smart and funny and witty and hip. I, I just loved being with them. By 1971, Manilow was already making his mark. First, as the musical director for a young Bette Midler, Then, as the composer of jingles like these. I am stuck on Band-Aid Brand, because Band-Aid stuck on me. I learned more doing these commercials than I learned anywhere, because pop music is all about 15 and 30 second hooks. Oh. Those two years were my college. Whatever I am. In 1973, a producer heard his voice on a demo tape and offered him a recording contract. I was the piano player, I was the arranger. I was getting the record deal as a singer-songwriter. It was just ridiculous. But his audiences disagreed. Suddenly, Barry Manilow was a superstar. You know I can smile Most people pray for success like that. I did not. It was big and it was very confusing to me. Especially because the fans and the critics seemed so far apart. The most hateful reviews, you would think that I had hurt their family. It was, <laughs> it just kept getting worse and worse and worse for a good 10 to 15 years. Barry Manilow Showstoppers, Barry Manilow Live. Now there's a nightmare. Manilow didn't write all of his own hits. Some came from other songwriters pushed on him by the record companies. One of the songs he didn't write? I am music and I write, I write the, the songs. songs. It took me a while to make friends with that song. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. It felt clumsy, but when I realized it was an anthem 
to the spirit of music. Oh, I can arrange an anthem. <laughs> and you did arrange the hell out of it. Yeah. I mean, you changed key three times? And from me. Yeah. But that's what you would do with an anthem. It's a worldwide symphony. I write the songs that make the whole Over the decades, Manilow endured financial close calls, a couple of health scares, and the public revelation of his relationship with his manager, Gary Keefe, whom he married in 2014. You've been with Gary for 45 years. I mean, what's the secret? <laughs> The secret to 45 years is separate bathrooms. <laughs> but pop music was never where his heart was. It just didn't challenge me enough. And maybe that's why, at age 80, Barry Manilow is about to unveil his first Broadway musical. So this is not Barry Manilow, the life no, story. No, no, we're gonna have to go through that problem. We were having dinner and a woman came by and said, excuse me for interrupting, but um, I'm so excited to see the show tonight, and I hope you sing I Write the Songs, because it's my favorite song. Oh, no. Manilow's longtime collaborator, Bruce Sussman, is the author and lyricist. The show, called Harmony, opens in two weeks. It tells the true story of a vocal sextet, three Jews, three Gentiles, who became world famous just before World War II. In their day, they were the Beatles sold millions of records, they made 13 movies, and then in 1933, Hitler comes to power. It became Ill illegal to sell their records or play them. The Nazis destroyed yeah, that yeah, stuff? Yeah, They were the poster children for what Germany could have been. The harmony in the broadest sense of the word, that Jews and Gentiles could work together and create something so beautiful, that was not part of the Third Reich's agenda. So they were just wiped out. Manilow and Sussman have been tinkering with this show for 30 years. You can do it, you can do it, this is your chance. And the Fanilows may be surprised to hear the breadth of music that Manilow can write when he's not confined by pop song conventions. Till the day we die. but he did sneak at least one pop melody yeah. into the show. Right. It's called Every Single Day. Every single day. You'll remember what we do today. You'll remember what we do today. Words we didn't say. That words we didn't say. We'll remember. Look, we found a way. And we'll always, every single day. Starting now. It's pretty, right? It's pretty great. Barry Manilow may always think of himself as the guy behind the piano, but he's not complaining about the pop career that took him by surprise. This is an insane career that's happened to me. It's just an unbelievable, beautiful experience for this skinny guy from Brooklyn <laughs> to have this kind of life.